Remember this? This is the Android phone that we installed Windows onto in order to run SteamVR on it. However, while we got Windows installed, SteamVR wouldn't exactly run. Well, you know me, I wasn't about to give up. So today, we're scaling it up. This is my mother's Xiaomi Mi Pad 5, which she has kindly donated for the continuation of this project, but only as long as I can give it back to her functioning afterwards. Wish me luck. What is up everyone, I'm Mystical, and today we will finally be running PC VR on mobile hardware, proving that you can, as a matter of fact, run PC VR on something like a Quest, a fully standalone headset. So let's jump right in. You see, after I found out that most apps wouldn't run on this phone, probably because the chip that's inside here, the 845, doesn't have x64 driver emulation, I decided I needed to retry the project. Somebody in the comments section had already done this successfully, but I wanted to redo it with a stronger chip and check out a few other titles to see exactly how it would run. So I went on a mission to redo the project. I even sacrificed my main driver, the OnePlus 8 Pro, to try and put Windows on it. However, after successfully reformatting it and running a pocket edition version of Windows, I found out that unfortunately it doesn't actually have the drivers necessary to run it. This is a Xiaomi Mi Pad 5. It sports a beautiful 2K display running at 120Hz, as well as 6GB of RAM. But the most important part here, it has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 860 that supports x64 driver emulation. And to add a little cherry on top, Project Renegade, the project that we're going to be using in order to make all of this happen, had linked a full tutorial on how to get Windows on this tablet. Let's jump right in. So first, we actually need to unlock the tablet, since most Xiaomi devices come bootloader locked from the factory. And after this is done, it's time for the repartitioning, which is the scariest part of this entire project. If anything is to go wrong, it'll go wrong during this process. Thankfully, I had actually done this already on four different devices, so I'm pretty confident that I know what I'm doing at this point. Now that we actually have the tablet successfully booting into Windows, might be a good time to say. If you are interested in doing this for yourself, installing Project Renegade on one of your own devices, there are multiple precautions and reasons as to why you might want to think twice. If you are interested in learning more about what Project Renegade is, I highly recommend you check out the beginning of the very first video we did on this, right up here. It should explain in more detail exactly what this entails and why you might not want to put it on something like your daily driver. However, if you are actually going to do this, please do send me pics on our Discord, as I am highly interested in finding out how this goes for you guys. Okay, so here we are, full Windows on a tablet. This still blows my mind to this date. Now that we're in the Windows setup, I'm gonna set everything up, and then finally, we will be able to test out how PC VR runs on mobile hardware. Okay, check this out. Here we are in full Windows desktop, on a Xiaomi Mi Pad 5, which is originally an Android device. And I think what's very important to note here is this thing has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 860, which is still less powerful than the XR2 inside the Quest 2, the Pico 4, and the XR2 Plus that is inside the Quest Pro, which means that if PC VR works on this, it would definitely work on those. That is, if you could install Windows on them. So the first thing we did is we launched Virtual Desktop in order to check whether it will actually turn on, because it didn't on this phone. And here's my reaction to that. Oh, I can see the desktop. Yes. Oh. <laughs> So, once we had confirmed that Virtual Desktop is, as a matter of fact, working, we jumped into Steam VR. And here's my reaction to how smooth Steam VR Home was running. OVR runtime is launching. Now, I might need to copy the Oculus files, which is not a good sign because we do not have a lot of stuff. Oh. My God. No way! It's actually. It's not like. <laughs> How is it not lagging? Well, don't get me wrong. Like the resolution isn't even turned down yet. What resolution? We're running at medium. I'm gonna try play Beat Saber like this. So now that we have confirmation that Steam VR will as a matter of fact run and it will not crash, let's jump into a few titles. A few disclaimers here. I did actually try to run AMD FSR on the tablet. However, it wouldn't launch any games whatsoever. So we are running this 
fully vanilla, in potato quality on virtual desktop, and at pretty much the lowest render resolution possible inside SteamVR itself. With all that being said, let's take a look at Beat Saber. As you can see, the game did as a matter of fact run. And while it may not look that bad, on the tablet itself, I can assure you that in the visuals that you can see from the headset itself, you can tell it didn't exactly run very well. That and it was quite significantly delayed, so it was not exactly the easiest thing ever to hit any blocks, which as you can imagine would be quite a problem with Beat Saber. That being said though, it was playable and it did launch. Keep in mind, this is an ARM chip. None of these games are optimized for it. Windows x86 emulation on ARM is nowhere near as good as Apple's. If Microsoft could do this correctly and make x86 emulation work really, really well on ARM, this could be running a whole ton better right now. Or, you know, if Steam was to make a standalone PC VR headset, they could definitely make it work miles better. The the whole point here is it is as a matter of fact running on a Snapdragon chip. This is PC VR on essentially a phone, which proves that it is possible. It just needs a pretty heavy amount of optimization. And do keep in mind that the 860 is not as powerful as the XR2 or the XR2 Plus that are in all the other standalone headsets. Okay, next we move on to something a little bit more difficult. Job Simulator. This also ran, and the delay was actually less significant than it was in Beat Saber. Now, don't get me wrong, this wasn't a very pleasant experience, and I don't think people would be playing this happily, but it did run, and I'd say you could suffer through it if you really, really felt like it. Remember, this is just a proof of concept, and I doubt anybody expected it to work as well as it would on a powerful gaming PC. This was mostly to prove that standalone PC VR would be possible. And to kind of push that notion further, here's the forest, because why not? Now, I know it looks more like a pixelated mess than anything else, but trust me, this is definitely the forest VR running on a Snapdragon chipset. This blows my mind. This is basically a phone. A phone running not only a PC game and full Windows, but also a PC VR game. It's absolutely crazy. If we had more RAM and a more powerful chip, I do wonder what we could do with this. That being said though, uh, the forest was definitely less than playable, and I felt like if I went a little bit too far away from the spawn point, I actually wouldn't be able to find my way back because of everything kind of looking like a singular colored Minecraft block. That being said though, I mean, at least it launched, right? Which is more than I could say for how Half-Life Alex. Half-Life Alex not only had some sort of validation problem inside Steam VR, but when I tried launching it through the EXE, it just kind of hung there for about two minutes and then crashed. I did try it a few times and I tried revalidating the files through Steam and unfortunately it just wouldn't turn on. Maybe that's for the better though, as I would imagine that it wouldn't be much more playable than the forest. In fact, I would imagine it would be a lot less playable. And also, same thing goes for Subnautica, which we did try to launch, and it got to the menu, let us create a new world, but I almost fell asleep waiting for it to launch, and it dropped down to 10 FPS, so I turned it off. But we did get it working. As I said, this is a proof of concept, even though we have no product, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I guess I've just been trying to prove that PC VR on standalone hardware is actually possible. And while this chipset does not compare to the Quest 1, it is less powerful than the XR2. So theoretically speaking, if someone really wanted to have a horrible PC VR experience and the bootloader was unlocked on something like a Quest 2, you could probably somehow mod PC VR onto it. But uh, again, I don't know how good your experience would be. Either way, I'm very happy with the way this turned out. Android is now back on my mom's tablet, but I was actually super pleasantly surprised with how well Windows ran on the Xiaomi Mi Pad 5. If the wake button actually worked, I would have left this for her as her main operating system. That's just on a completely different note. So we got successful PC VR on a standalone headset, my mom got an upgraded version of Android 13, so everyone is happy out. Let me know what you think about this down below. Would you consider playing PC VR games on this if this was your only way of playing PC VR? And how much better do you think the XR2 would do 
spin at 860. Leave all your answers to those questions down below. I'm Mystical. This was today's video. Let me know what you think about crazy videos like this. Would you like to see more of them on the channel? And that is going to be it. If you guys like this one, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too. But let me know why down below. If you guys are not yet part of the community, check out our Discord and check out our Reddit down below. I want to see you posting your spicy memes on there. And thank you so, so much to the lovely names going off to my right right now. Those guys are my Patreons helping me quite a bit right now. So thank you so, so much. And as usual, if you want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your forehead, dig my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.